scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, and who bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Someone bless him. Thank you, Jesus, for your power. Thank you for your wisdom. Thank you because this is Bethel, the house of bread. Thank him in advance for the transformation that will happen in your life tonight. The Bible says they go from strength to strength as many as appear before the Lord in Zion. Someone is saying thank you. A grateful heart is saying thank you. Now ask him for a visitation tonight. Ask him for a mighty encounter. Mighty encounter tonight for everyone that asketh, receiveth. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. There are many things that happen to us when we gather like this. Among the many things that happen is a revelation of his presence in a higher dimension. We see him as he is. We know him the more. And the Bible says, now the Lord is that spirit. It says, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Then it says, we all. So it's an experience for all. We all, not we some, we all. The weak, the strong, the hungry, the filled, we all. Beholding us in a mirror, it says we are changed. We are changed into that same image from glory to to glory we behold the glory of God we behold the glory of God we behold the glory of God we behold we behold we behold the glory of God we behold the glory of God we behold the glory of God as always is to be attentive listen Satan does not stop walking just because you are in the presence of God because he knows the presence of God alone does not prohibit him even in the presence of God your will has a role to play you can choose to allow Satan buffet you in the presence of God Satan never ran away from Jesus not even with fasting Satan is not afraid of the word of God. Satan is not afraid of the presence of God. 
He's afraid of what the faith of the believer does with the word of God. He's afraid of what the faith of the believer does connecting to the presence of God. The presence of God on his own and the word of God on his own will remain impotent because God will not force his will and purposes on any believer. So just that you, because you are in the presence of God, it does not guarantee that you walk away free, that you walk away healed, that you walk away delivered. You must connect by faith. Are we together? Can you pray that one prayer? I release my faith tonight. Go ahead and pray. I release my faith for transformation. I release my faith for encounters. I release my faith to receive. I release my faith to become. Someone pray. I release my faith to prosper. I release my faith to access light. Light that produces. Not a semblance of it. Light indeed. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. The Bible says that was the true light that lighted every man. There are false lights. I have taught you here. They carry a semblance of liberty but cannot bring you liberty indeed. But that was the true light that lighted every man. Father, help us tonight. We have come to access wisdom. We have come to be empowered by your spirit. Spirit of the living God, we declare that you have unrestrained access. Access in this place, access to our minds, that you will change us, mold us, and help us become. In Jesus' name we pray. Give Jesus a big hand clap and please, you may be seated. I welcome everyone. Thank you so much for your presence. Always an honor to have us around, uh, particularly for uh, those who have traveled from far and near. We thank you and we appreciate God for your presence. For the many who are following online, thank you very much. Your lives will never be the same in the name of Jesus. We're really honored to have in our midst tonight um, Pastor Godwin and his dear wife, Pastor Sean, his treasure house. Let's give them a big God bless you, Koinonia. Give them a big Koinonia welcome. Surprise, surprise. God bless you, sir. And God bless you, ma, in the name of Jesus Christ. Um, I know that there are quite a number of people who have traveled. I spotted um, Pastor Ike. God bless you. Good to see you. And um, all who have traveled, if you're a man of God here, a woman of God particularly, we thank you and we honor you for your presence. The Lord will bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Tonight, my heart is indicting a good matter. It's a year I speak of excellent things. My tongue, by his grace, is the pen of a ready writer. Hallelujah. I've shared a few things in this house that I want to do a quick recap on tonight. Number one, I've said it in this house that the ignorant believer is also a defeated believer. What is common between the ignorant believer and the defeated believer is that these plagues come upon a believer, not an unbeliever. But the fact that the believer is ignorant, hallelujah, because salvation in Christ is a gift. It's not a product of transformation. You receive by faith. So that you are a believer does not mean that you have attained onto the level that helps you to manifest the God life in reality, in experience. The ignorant believer remains a defeated believer. And I taught us here that the blessings that are contained in this life that we have received in Christ is manifested in experience through knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. That if you fail to access knowledge, if you fail to access understanding, if you fail to access wisdom, you will be alienated from the life of God. Having their understanding darkened, it says, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their hearts. Hallelujah. Living in victory demands that you understand the dynamics of wisdom, 
the dynamics of faith and the dynamics of power. Let me take it again. Living in the experience of victory in this kingdom demands that you understand the dynamics of wisdom, the ministry of the word, the dynamics of faith, and the dynamics of power. If any one of these dimensions is short in your Christian experience, you will never rise to your God-given potential. The bankruptcy of wisdom will cost you more than you can imagine. The bankruptcy of faith will cost you more than you can imagine. The bankruptcy of power will cost you more than you can imagine. You're not given the liberty to choose any of them you want. They are all vital components to your excelling, vital components to your walking in victory. Do not choose wisdom at the expense of faith. Do not choose faith at the expense of power. Do not choose power at the expense of the first two. You need to contend for wisdom, then contend for faith, then contend for power. Are we learning? Many believers seem to come around one of these three dimensions and it's been responsible for the lopsidedness in our Christian experience. So there are believers who have a semblance of wisdom, vast understanding of scripture with no justification of that word as far as their result is concerned. The missing ingredient many times is faith, the faith to connect to that wisdom. And there are those who understand the dynamics of faith, but they do not know that in all your manifesting faith, if you are bankrupt of his power, it is his divine power that gives us all things that pertains unto life and godliness. The assignment of faith is what a connecting wire does when you buy a fridge that fridge has to be connected to a socket that wire that connects the fridge and the socket is faith but the electricity that comes from the power holding component of the power holding company is what actually powers the fridge so it is possible that the wire can be fine it's just that there's no light as we call it in africa and you will still not have the fridge on these are the working dynamics of the kingdom so every time we're gathered like this you expect the holy spirit to revolve around these three areas growing you in wisdom growing you in faith and growing you in power say after me wisdom say faith say power one last time say wisdom say faith say power the intent behind the teaching ministry in this house is to keep revolving around these three areas until you are holistically built. So in the communication, you will hear the wisdom of God. Then there will be a point of application where you will know how to release your faith, connecting to the word. And then we trust the supply of the spirit while we speak to provide the power component. Are we together? This is why I am sure that tonight, as always, that you must return with a testimony. Amen. After tonight's service, you believe that, shout a believer's amen. amen. One more thought. I was thinking about my teaching tonight and I had to digress in my thoughts to consider something I want to read out for you right now. I wrote here that mentality plays a very large role in the quality of your Christian experience. Mentality plays a very large role in the quality of your Christian experience. There are people today who are not victims of laziness, not at all. They are not victims of falsehood. They are not victims of insincerity, yet they continue to live defeated Christian lives simply because of faulty belief systems. That mentality plays a vital role in the quality of your Christian experience. Mentality not church attendance mentality not just recitation of scripture your mentality plays a vital role to the quality of your christian experience 
And let me repeat what I just said, that there are many people today who are not victims of laziness. As far as diligence is concerned, they are diligent enough to have seen the word produce. They are not false. Their pursuit is with all sincerity and purity of heart. And yet they continue to live defeated lives. And the reason is because something is wrong with their beliefs. I'm praying for you that as the word of God comes tonight, may it erode every faulty belief, every mentality that has empowered Satan and demons to keep you bound, keep you limited. In the name of Jesus, let it give way at the instance of the word. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Are you ready? Fasten your seat belts and walk with me as we consider a very important topic tonight. I believe that this is very vital to our growth and our excelling in the kingdom. As always, I'm committed to bringing you truths that build, truths that establish us in righteousness. My intent is for us to become manifestations of the glory of God in experience. Hallelujah. Manifesting kingdom authority. Matthew chapter 8. We're beginning our reading from verse 5. Manifesting kingdom authority. I want to teach you the dynamics of walking in power and authority. You will be greatly blessed tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. For those of us who have been frustrated in our Christian experience because it seems that the power and the authority component has been missing. We have the language, we have the education, the Christian education, but the spiritual wherewithal to defend the things that we say about God has not been captured in our lives. I'm praying tonight for you in the name of Jesus that that missing link, that God will connect the dots for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Matthew chapter 8, please. Manifesting kingdom authority. Want to take a study tonight from the life of Jesus and the centurion. Verse 5. And when Jesus entered into Capernaum, the Bible says, there came unto him a centurion, beseeching him, uh -huh, next verse, saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home, sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. Next verse. And Jesus said unto him, I will come in honor to your request. You are a centurion. That would be the equivalent of a captain in the army. I will come and heal him. Verse 8. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only. Take note of that statement. But speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. Verse 9. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this man, go, and he goeth, and to another come, and he cometh, and to my servant do this, and he doeth it. Hallelujah. And when Jesus heard it, he marveled and said unto them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. Reading to 13. And I say unto you that many shall come from the east and west and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. 12. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Final verse. And Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way. Go thy way. As thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. And his servant was healed in the self same hour. The Lord bless the reading of his word in Jesus' name. Many believers are not able to walk in spiritual power or manifest kingdom authority in spite of the fact that the Bible is very clear as to the fact that among the many resources that were given to the believer to help us excel is the opportunity to walk in the authority and the power of the kingdom. Maybe I should start this way. This kingdom is a kingdom of power. Are we together now? The kingdom that we are part of and the kingdom we have been given is a kingdom that is in all way powerful. When Jesus was teaching the disciples how to pray, 
one of the additions even though there are arguments there whether or not it was in the original manuscript you would find it in many renditions for thine is the kingdom thine is the power thine is the glory forever and ever so this is not just a kingdom of wisdom this is a kingdom of power when jesus walked upon the earth he did not just demonstrate the wisdom of god he demonstrated power he demonstrated authority over elemental forces authority over the vicissitudes of life the things that plagued the men that he met and he miraculously turned people's situations around in fact it was on account of the display of his power that many people were drawn to him for instance his experience with the madman in gadara the bible tells us that that man was so impacted by the power of jesus to deliver and restore him to his right mind two miracles happened there one was the miracle of deliverance the demons were casted out number two the transformation that happened to the man the bible says when they came they found the man seated and with his right mind and he went and brought together a decapolis the ministry of power has helped many through the centuries to believe it is part of the tools that have been given by God to the saints through Christ to be able to help men to bring power to our witness. In Acts chapter 4 and verse 33, the Bible says, And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he says, Great grace was upon them all. Great grace was upon them all great grace was upon them all are we together in acts chapter 10 and verse 38 it says how god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy ghost and with power was not just the holy ghost and with power and he went about endued with that power and he was doing good healing all that were oppressed of the devil for god was with him so this is a kingdom of power and it is in the destiny of every believer please listen carefully it is in the destiny of every believer regardless the nature of your kingdom assignment the ministry of power walking in power and authority is not privy to a few apostles or prophets or teachers or pastors are we together it's not just for those who are called into the fivefold ministry as we know it is the heritage of the saints to walk in and to manifest true kingdom power let me repeat that again for your hearing and learning it is the heritage of the saints to walk in and manifest true kingdom power true kingdom authority there is a dimension of the life of God you cannot communicate to your world bankrupt off and outside of true spiritual power and true spiritual authority like you will be learning many possibilities in this kingdom in fact all possibilities in this kingdom are power dependent power dependent healing the sick power dependent casting out devils power dependent recreating possibilities over the lives of people power dependent my god turning circumstances around power dependent making advancement in life power dependent it is by you that i can run through a troop it is by my god that i can leap over a wall are we together advancing forcefully in spite of the arsenals of darkness it is god that teaches my fingers my hands to war my fingers to fight that means if you do not understand the dynamics of power and the dynamics of authority you will peg your life and limit yourself spiritually now for the average believer in our world the moment we talk of power the only thing that personifies power is falling down so the average believer's understanding of power is the ability to whether through speaking or through words once another believer can fall under the anointing we sign that register and we believe that we are powerful 
power is beyond falling down it is beyond shouting under the anointing are we together now it is my prayer and intent after tonight's teaching that you will walk in power that is recognized both in the spirit and in the physical realm in the name of Jesus Christ what was missing in the experience of the sons of Sceva and the one who was plagued with demons was power not knowledge they said in the name of Jesus whom Paul preaches that that communication was correct but the power components to back them was not there and the demon said Jesus I know words with power Paul I know words with power but who are you words alone and the demons descended on them it is a risk to sojourn the earth proposing many things even in the presence of demon spirits in the presence of men now believers make all kinds of arrogant statements i can hold a charm and nothing happens to me you are right if there is power but if power is missing and you make certain ambitious statements you may spend the rest of your short-lived life paying the price Are we together the ministry of power is not for Pentecostals no the ministry of power is not for charismatic people it is a vital component it is a principal survival strategy among the many things that was the green light for the church to be birthed to be born and for the ministry of witness to begin was the arrival of power before Jesus died he had already taught them they were not bankrupt of mentorship but he said tarry what you need is not more information tarry if you carry this information alone you will be disappointed tarry until ye be endued with power from on high the bible says in acts chapter 2 and verse 1 now when the day of pentecost was fully come they says they were gathered together in one accord in one place suddenly the ministry of power my god it says there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind fulfilling acts chapter 1 and verse 8 but ye shall receive power someone say power, power. the devil has not heard you say power. power you shall receive power after that the holy ghost is come upon you and the power shall make you witnesses witnesses it takes more than education and enlightenment to be witnesses you shall receive power. T.L. Osborne had knowledge, but he lacked power. He went to India and was viciously disappointed. He returned back, not for more education, but stayed with God until power came. I watched a few of their videos preparing for this meeting and it challenged me so much. I was listening to Maurice Cerule of Blessed Memory and this man, I mean, he was sharing how the, his exploits as he sojourned from city to city, showing the ministry of power. We have downplayed power to our detriment is the reason why the gospel is seemingly powerless. We say a lot of things that are right. Our problem is not error. Our problem is there is no backing to what we are saying. There is no wholeness to the gospel. We say God can do things that are never done in our lives. The reason why we patronize products is because there is an element of performance. When the marketers tell you that the gadget will work this way, when you buy it, it works. And they never have to tell you to tell another person about it. I've told you, the reason why evangelism is difficult is because we are largely missing the power component. And the truth is that because our ignorance is laced with a lot of pride, it is difficult to even settle down and start a constructive journey towards accessing genuine power. It's difficult for the average believer to admit that we are far short of God's expectation, his definition of power. Read your Bible and see what men did in the presence of genuine power. Genuine power. Hallelujah. And so if we must manifest the authority that comes with this kingdom, it is important for us to know and appreciate, number one, that this is a kingdom of power. This is not just a kingdom of light. This is not just a kingdom of knowledge and wisdom, but it's a kingdom of power 
and authority the first thing God gave man Genesis chapter 1 and verse 28 the Bible says God gave man dominion dominion 26 to 28 he says have dominion have dominion don't speak dominion he did not just say understand dominion have dominion have dominion have dominion are we learning so this is a kingdom of power. We have been given power. We have been given authority in this kingdom. Luke chapter 10 and verse 19. Jesus was speaking. We'll make reference to that scripture a little later and we'll read the amplified version. But for now, let's make do with KJV. It says, Behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Psalm 8, 4 to 6. Psalm 8, 4 to 6. It says, What is man that thou art mindful of him? And the son of man that thou visitest him? Verse 5. For thou hast made him a little lower than Elohim and has crowned him with glory and honor. Verse 6 it says thou made him to have dominion. Say dominion. Please shout it like you believe. Say dominion. <laughs> dominion over the works of thy hands. Please keep that scripture there. It says thou has put all things under his feet. If you travel with me from this to Hebrews chapter 2 reading 5 to 8. Same scripture but just to add flesh to it. It says, for unto the angels had he not put in subjection the world to come, whereof we speak. Verse 6, it says, for in a certain place, making reference to Psalm 8, he testified saying, keep the scripture please, what is man that thou art mindful of him, not the son of man that thou visitest him. Verse 7, thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, thou hast crowned him with glory and honor. He said, you did set him over the works of your hands. I like verse 8. It says that thou hast put all things under his feet. For in, for in that he put all things under his feet, he left nothing. He left nothing that was not under his feet. But the tragedy is now, in experience, we do not yet see all things under his feet. So whether you walk in the reality of kingdom authority or not, does not change this verdict. That all things in God's mind, man is the zenith of his creation. An adumbration of man's authority is seen in the story of Joseph at his point of exaltation. Pharaoh beat his chest and said, I am Pharaoh. And it is only in the throne that you will be higher than me. But in matters of governance and operation over Egypt, everything will revolve at thy word, dominion. Joseph was not the most powerful. He was not even the healthiest. We are talking of a slave who just came out hours ago from the prison. But the moment it was conferred upon him, Egypt was at the mercy of the power of of Joseph he could do and undo with anyone including Potiphar who sent him to Egypt sent him to prison let me tell you believers if we want to see the harvest like never before if we want to rise to become manifestations of the light and the glory of God it is important for us to not only embrace but understand the dynamics of spiritual power now let me say this there are a group of believers who have downplayed and trivialized the necessity for power and authority in the excelling of the believer and in the advancement of the kingdom that is a big mistake and then there are those who are unnecessarily obsessed with the idea of power without understanding the dynamics of working in the experience of it so we have believers on one hand who out of frustration most likely for secretly trying various formulas to not they have concluded that power is unnecessary and usually they lean along the angle of wisdom then there are those who are obsessed. If you talk and you have not mentioned power, they won't listen to you. And yet in all of that communication, the testament of working in authority is not captured in their Christian experience. It is not enough that we understand that this is a kingdom of power and authority. 
It is not enough for us to know that it's our heritage in Christ. We must be able to understand the dynamics. And I want to do a little work on your mind right now. And please cooperate with me and the Holy Spirit as we journey with you to redefine a few things. I want to start tonight by doing a few redefinitions. And I've done this before, but I need it to connect to the other things that I'll be telling you. Let's define a few things. What is power? Please write. What is power? It is important for you to understand what power is. When we talk about power in the kingdom, what exactly is power? Power is the capacity to influence outcomes. Please write it down. The capacity to influence outcomes is called power. We say that you will have power to the degree to which you have the wherewithal to influence outcomes. If you lack the wherewithal to influence outcomes, all kinds of outcomes, spiritual outcomes, economic outcomes, sociological outcomes, every time you see a man in the spirit or even in the secular sustaining wherewithal to influence outcomes that man is a powerful man so power is the capacity to influence outcomes can i give you another definition i define power furthermore as the force that compels compliance the force that compels compliance i like this because the fallen system is a world of disobedience. All unclean spirits are disobedient spirits. In fact, the signature operation of unclean spirits are disobedience. Is, uh, is disobedience. Are we together now? Yes. Disobedience is the signature of all unclean spirits. And so every time god speaks or every time you speak in the name of the lord do not expect compliance until they are brought by force satan will not leave your family just because the word of god says he should satan will not leave your finances leave your life leave your destiny it takes more than a good heart a well-intentioned personality to be free the Bible says, say unto God, how terrible art thou in thy works. It says it is through the greatness of thy power that thy enemies shall submit themselves to you. The force that compels compliance. The force that compels compliance. There are many things that God said should not happen to your life. Satan heard it. Unclean spirits heard it and they still stubbornly hold on to whatever keeps you a victim. If you do not know how to bail yourself out by the application of genuine spiritual power, you may remain a victim forever. It takes power to grow. It takes power to retain anything you have been given. Retainership is not a product of wisdom. Acquisition is a product of wisdom. But retainership is a product of power. Are we together now? Power is the capacity to influence outcomes. It is the force that compels compliance. Let me tell you the truth. This world and the gates that have been closed around the systems of this world are not about to be open for you except and unless you come with power. Except and unless you come with power. For instance, ministry will never work until power is part of the equation. Your home, your family will never work until power is part of the equation. Longevity in health and joy will never work. Promotion will never work. Advancement will never work. Are we together now? Nothing works in this kingdom until power keeps it in place. Look at me. Think of what happens in your house and think of what happens to your produce in the fridge when there's no light, as we call it. Imagine that there's no light and you don't have any way of outsourcing power. You know how inconveniencing it is to stay two, three days, no electricity. Most likely, precious things that you've spent money buying, putting in the fridge, 
all the deep freezer will begin to rot is that so look the amount of wastage that happens in a house when you have 72 hours without power so think of what happens to a believer from january till june no power i can tell you most likely the things you have received would have left you or would have lost their value power retains there are things that can stay in the fridge for up to one month because there's constant electricity. Hmm. When ministry remains, it took power to keep it. If your family is still gathered together, it takes power to keep it. Are we together? Even your name, the reputation God has given you, it takes power. 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 Many of us have lost our bishopric because we ignored the ministry of power and we allow things to slip over our hands. Satan switched off the switch in your house and destiny and you allowed it. Things began to decay. The things that should carry value and glory were missing because there's, there's no power and there's no authority. I don't know one person who demons left in peace without engaging power. I don't know one person whose destiny just happened like that without power. It took power for Jesus to leave Hades back to the earth, power from the earth to the throne. Elevation is a product of power. There are many people in ministry who do not understand the dynamics of power. There are many people in business who do not understand the dynamics of power. There are many leaders who do not understand power because we have produced, we have turned power to become a charismatic issue, an issue for men of God, or our concept of power has just been deliverance and falling down and maybe healing. Oh no, no. Power is beyond that. The force that compels compliance. The power to manipulate outcomes. You manipulate and check it with the word. They are not the same. You manipulate again until it becomes consistent with that which is written. I believe what I'm teaching you. You are in for a real journey this night. We are still defining terminology. So power is the capacity to influence outcomes. Every prayer request is an outcome desired, whose, is, is an outcome uh, that is a representation of your expectation. Something you want to change is what you document as a prayer request. And it only answers to power. Hmm. The subject of power was not supposed to be an issue that we talk about. The reason why the subject of power has become an irritation in the body of Christ is because it has become a noisy expression. A noisy expression of zeal without a testament validating it. We talk a lot about power. We teach series about power with all due respect. We write books about power. So many things power can do. Stories about power that we never see brought to the scene. Is the reason why the world does not take us seriously. I tell you the truth. Where the carcasses are, in truth, there the eagles will gather. Are we together? Let's define authority. Authority is the right or the legitimacy to use power. The legitimacy to administer power. The legitimacy to administer power. Please lend me your attention. It's called authority. The legitimacy to administer power. Authority is also the right to represent, to stand instead for. Are we together? So when we talk about authority, we talk about the legitimacy, the right to use power. It takes authority to not make your use of power illegal. I will always give this example. Please look at me. Imagine with me that there are two people standing here, one by my left 
and the other by my right. Let's call the person by my left an armed robber or a terrorist. Are we together? Having a gun, an AK-47. And then someone standing here, a military man, licensed by, you know, the Nigerian military. Both of them are holding guns. One has power because with that gun, he can produce a real effect on your body, like death or injury. The effect is not fake. If he shoots that gun, the gun does not care whether it's a criminal shooting it. It will kill you, except you have something else greater than the gun. Are we together now? But for the military man, why will another person shoot? Both of them will shoot, but one will go to bed in peace, commended by the nation. Another one will go to jail. What is the difference? Both of them have power, but only one has authority. Are you listening now? You have to understand this. Just because you have power does not authorize you to use it. Oh, there is a judicial system in the spirit that vets authority. You ask the sons of Skiva. So many believers are conscious of power, but very few people understand the dynamics of authority. And you will be learning in the course of this teaching that you need both power and authority to walk in dominion. Dominion is a resultant effect of walking in power and authority. Power and authority. If you have power alone, then you are in the class of Satan. Are we together now? Authority is a legitimacy to use power. Now, let me say a few things about authority. Listen carefully, please. Authority always comes with a predefined jurisdiction. I need you to hear this. The moment you mention authority, you have to mention two other things. Number one, jurisdiction. Number two, supervision. I need you to hear this. It is impossible to have authority without these two components. Genuine authority must go hand in hand with these two things. Everywhere you see authority, you must see jurisdiction and a system to supervise the usage of it. So when you say, I have authority, the first thing we need to know is over what and over where. And the second thing we need to know is what administrative system was put in place to check balance you in case you become a rebel. Are you seeing why many believers do not walk in authority? Listen carefully. Authority is always jurisdictional. Please look at me. The official name for Nigeria is the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Now, you may not understand that. That means that a, a predefined land mass, are we together, was a mat wherein the governmental jurisdiction of Nigeria functions. Even if you take one step out of that jurisdiction, the laws of Nigeria does not apply to you again. There are nations where a rope is literally what separates one nation from another. But the consequences of escaping that rope by mistake can cost you the remaining part of your life. Are we together? A rope, literally. If you move that rope this way, you are in another nation with another jurisdiction and another set of laws. Jurisdiction is an important component to walking in dominion. Like you will be learning, I have taught you here, but I will repeat it again, that the believer does not have power everywhere and it does not have power over everything. It is important for you to know what God gave you authority over and how far that authority is so that you will not find yourself engaging and applying power where your jurisdiction does not hold. Let me give you an instance. If you recall when I was teaching you, no believer has power in the throne room. You cannot command anything in the throne room to respond to you. Not the throne, not God, not elders, none of those. There is no record in scripture of anybody issuing a command in the throne room and making things happen. There is a predefined jurisdiction. Are we together? 
<laughs> what is jurisdiction? This will be my third definition and then we'll begin to build a few things. Jurisdiction is the sphere where the use of power is allowed beyond which it becomes illegal. Jurisdiction is the sphere where the use of power is allowed beyond which it becomes illegal. You have to be a military man or you have to be a judicial person or to really understand these definitions, the concept of jurisdiction. There are times, at least we know in Nigeria, where a particular issue cannot be dealt with within a court and they say it is beyond their jurisdiction. Am I right on that? That means take this issue out of this court. Everyone there is qualified, but they know that they cannot administer, they cannot deal with that issue because it is beyond their jurisdiction. So we have different kinds of courts. They are all courts. I'm not learned enough, forgive me, to give you all of the structures intelligently. I won't even attempt it, but I can attempt the ones I know. I know that there's high court. I know that there's supreme court. I know that there's appeal court. I think I tried. What is the difference between a customary court and a supreme court? Jurisdiction and the authority. As far as every nation is concerned, once the supreme court gives a verdict, whether it is right or not, within that predefined jurisdiction the matter has ended if you go to the does appeal court now nah, i don't you see why it's good to be appeal court does not have any power again i think it's done the supreme court declares and it is over no matter how angry you are you have to wait for maybe rapture god comes and whatever it is but as far as the earth is concerned now listen as interesting as what i'm saying is it has an implication to your life but did you know that even the Supreme Court itself, from a, from a transcontinental standpoint, also submits to other judicial systems? Am I right on that? That is what makes the Supreme Court valid. There is no authority anywhere without a system of supervision higher than it. It will not work. What makes any system have authority is the ability to acknowledge another supervisory body that regulates it. I made a statement some time ago and it disturbed many people within the body of Christ. I said God does not have authority. It is true. The reason why God does not have authority is because of everything I just told you. For authority to happen to a man, there must be jurisdiction. And number two, there must be another system higher than you to supervise it. God cannot have authority, not as God. He only manifested authority when he became a man. And that's because he submitted to the authority of the Father. Are we together? Listen. This is the reason why God can give men authority. The Bible says he sought for a, to find out if there was any higher than him so that he would swear by and not finding any. He had to swear by himself. It's in your Bible. He was willing to submit if he found one higher than him, but he did not find any. The meaning of that is when God speaks to you, it's important to understand who just spoke. Did you hear what I said? Any other person can speak. But when God speaks, the righteous judge, when he hits that hammer and says, go forward. Listen, if you don't know this, you will never see any sick bed person healed in your life. When you stand before the sick, when you stand before the oppressed, the moment you think just of your fasting and prayer alone, nobody will rise up from there. There has to be the consciousness. There is a parliament in heaven. God, the one who is speaking to you is not supervised by another government. No. 
he has absolute power absolute he cannot have authority if God has authority it means there is a place where his power cannot work if he has authority it means there must be someone higher than him that he too should worship when Jesus became a man there was no manifestation of power until he acknowledged the government of heaven as my father has sent me I didn't just go I was sent I had to stay until I was sent you will understand the story between Jesus and the centurion now so Jesus is on his way and he meets this man this military man there's a reason why the story is with a military man because they are best to understand these terms so the man says please my servant other synoptic accounts will tell you his daughter Jarius's daughter and the rest but in this case he says my servant is sick unto death and Jesus said I respect you I will come to your house and he says no sir you are a busy man but there is something I know by my training I am a man under I didn't become a captain for nothing there I am under authority and being under authority has given me the license to say unto one go and he must go if he disobeys he did not disobey me the authority higher than me has to answer for me I say to one go and he goes I say to one come and he comes I say to one do this and he does it and Jesus said ah you know what he was saying Jesus you too you are a man under authority I've watched the miracles that come from you and yet you say you are a man if you said you were God I will not ask you but that you are a man this formula also applies to you so speak the word only that means the government that backs you does not have authority they can reach my house from anywhere and Jesus said who taught you this I've not found this orientation no not in Israel listen to me I've studied my Bible a bit I don't claim to know everything I've studied custodians of genuine power not talkers of it men who have demonstrated power that and their demonstration has had equal value in any nation it was Maurice Sorullo who was teaching and he said he went to a a prison place where they confine mad people I think it was in Haiti as soon as he stepped there the spirits were shouting through the people shouting his name Maurice Cerullo. these were people who were not learned because power stepped in let me tell you there is a signature upon men who genuinely carry power you can't politicize it in the spirit I tell you the truth if, if your life does not carry power the realm of the spirit knows those who carry power this is not just about speaking gibberish and Pentecostal language power power the Bible says handkerchiefs and aprons were taken from the body of the apostles and they were taken to those who were sick the handkerchiefs did not speak in tongues the handkerchiefs did not fast they did not pray but they came in contact with men who carried power and understood authority I have never seen a generation that is a combination of great advancement in the spirit but commanding such pathetic disrespect from the realm of the spirit are we together there were men who walked upon the earth and circumstances would not dare disrespect their commands some of them were not educated but my god they carried power they carried genuine power the ratio of the things we say versus the the amount of them that happen is so small we need to go back to the secret place and ask ourselves something must be missing are we learning now the Bible speaks about Samuel a man whose word did not fall to the ground 
there are very few people in our generation who can ever have that testimony that they speak and there is performance to their speakings backed up by power tonight's teaching is to challenge you so jurisdiction is the sphere where the use of power is allowed it means even the military man as much as he's licensed to shoot he cannot shoot anyone anywhere do you know even in the times of war there's what they call rules of engagement am i right on that military people sometimes the rules is that you don't kill women and children look for the terrorists alone it is the reason why when they are fighting wars at an international scale when they hit civilians they charge the nations and the people because they violated the rules of engagement most believers do not know what they have power over our ignorance is expressed in our prayers we pray and command everything including things that are beyond our jurisdiction and the realm of the spirit frowns at our ignorance our results follow same it's important for us to understand the dynamics of power i want to show you something that will make you a believer with authority that powers in the realm of the spirit will know you don't need to announce that you have entered a city you step into that city from one position and things will begin to leave a child that is missing somewhere you make one declaration you step into a city and like the like the donkey of Saul that child returns home because the force is holding him cannot stand again hallelujah I remember it was said about the man Charles G Finney that one time he prayed so much when he entered a city people began to see mighty manifestations happen and they said what is happening they didn't even know and somebody announced that Charles G Finney is in town now he was having a crusade in a particular location but there was a a jurisdictional reaction because when you enter a place that is within your jurisdiction everything should answer there are we together now everything should answer now if the president of this nation comes here in his capacity as the president how many of you know that there are other people who must come with him in that capacity that is how it is in the spirit when you have this consciousness of authority and power when you step in you know that you are never alone there is an angelic backing it's true power the force that compels compliance authority the rights the legitimacy to administer power and jurisdiction and I told you that authority goes hand in hand with jurisdiction and a system that supervises it it is the reason why God does not have authority there is no jurisdiction that his power cannot reach in fact he is the creator of all things and then there is no government higher than him that supervises him that means you cannot say God is just or unjust there is no basis for it if God decides to lift a man you don't say God is unjust based on what he is God there is no reference that supervises him I will tell you why the Word of God is powerful that same God now submitted himself to the Word and says listen I can do all things I can do anything and I am God however I have limited my operation to the jurisdiction that scripture allows so the Bible says he exalts his word more than his reputation more than his name that means as powerful as God is he still failed to keep his power within check using the word that means any dimension the word does not allow God's power cannot go beyond the way to get God's power to move is not to ask him to move is to show the jurisdiction based on scripture if the word of God if scripture cannot channel God's power to your body God's power cannot reach there because it is the word that defines and allocates where the power of God will find expression anywhere the word of God goes to it becomes legitimate for God's power to be there hallelujah now listen 
there are three things I want you to note. Number one, man does not have absolute power. Please write this, burn it in your heart and then write it on your notes. Man does not have absolute power. Only God has absolute power and let me add, is the exclusive owner of all power. Man does not have absolute power. It is true that man was given power. It is true that man has dominion. Our dominion, like our power, is not absolute. No. We don't have power everywhere and over everything. When the Bible says all things, it is a contextual communication. Second Chronicles 29 verse 11. If God is helping you, shout amen. amen. Second Chronicles 29 did I get that right? First Chronicles, my apologies. 29, 11. I want you to shout that scripture with me. First Chronicles 29, 11. Do you have the patience to read? Let's go. One to read. Thine, O Lord, is the greatness uh -huh, and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. Read on. For all that is in the heaven and in the earth is thine. Thine is the kingdom, O Lord and thou art exalted as head above all. Second Chronicles 20, 5 and 6. Second Chronicles 20, 5 and 6. Man does not have absolute power. Only God has absolute power. And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court. Verse 6. And he said, O Lord God of our fathers, art thou not God in heaven, and rulest not thou over all the kingdoms of the heathen? And in thy hand is there not power and might, so that none is able to withstand thee? Absolute power, not shared power, not jurisdictional power. God has absolute power. Number two. To walk in dominion, you must have both authority and power. To walk in dominion, you must have both authority and power. Now let's read Luke 10, 19. Read it in the Amplified. The Amplified version is the correct expression. King James in this scripture did not do justice. Behold, I have given you authority and power. When you read it in KJV, it says, Behold, I have given you power to trample upon snakes and scorpions. It's not a very accurate rendition. Amplified gives it a better expression. Behold, I have given you authority and I have given you power to trample upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power that the enemy possesses. To believe Satan does not have power is a joke. He does. The Bible acknowledges that he does. But what Satan does not have is authority. Is the reason why his use of power is illegitimate anywhere on earth. Anywhere the believer shows up. It is the reason why you can disarm his power and render it to naught. Just because the devil is not disturbing you does not mean he's not disturbing somebody else. Somebody else is still his victim. It's just that it is not you. And it's because it is light and power that comes through light that has bailed you out. Are we learning now? If curses are not working in your life, it does not mean they don't exist. It's just that your reality has immuned you from being a victim of it. Are we together now? Yes. If witchcraft does not plague you, it does not mean there's no witchcraft on earth. There is. Look at me. How many of you know that there is darkness in this room now? There is. It's only that the presence of light cannot allow that become a reality. But the moment the light is off, the darkness does not come. It simply manifests. It is there. In every light there is darkness. It's just that the dominion power of the light cannot allow you to know that there is darkness. There are parts of the world where children have not experienced blackout. What we call, you know, so when they travel and come to some places in Africa and we are rationing 12, 12, 12 hours on. Now, of course, 
I love my nation. God is helping us, eh? But are we together? And they see that in broad daylight, outside is brighter than inside because there's darkness. They begin to ask, what is wrong? And they look at the child and say, it's not your fault because you were born somewhere there. And they begin to tell you stories. I was born, it was with a lantern that they used this and that and that. And now the child is wondering, darkness, listen, Satan has power. Let me tell you the truth. When the Bible says he was stripped of his power, you need to understand the dynamics of that stripping. It does not mean intrinsically he does not have power. It means a system was created that if engaged will render his power impotent. Are we together now? Just because you don't have a virus inside you, destroying you, does not mean the virus is not on earth. It is on earth. It's simply that your immunity and the health system you've put around your life may not allow that reality to be your reality. But someone else is a victim of it. To deny the existence of that virus is a joke. But to acknowledge it and become afraid of it is also not the way. You need to understand what health plan. I'm just giving you an analogy. You understand what I'm saying? So believers are not called to fear Satan, fear causes, fear all of these things. No, the, the, this is the other angle that needs to be balanced, especially in the subject of demonology, deliverance. The journey of the believer is not an endless pursuit of fighting demons indefinitely. It is true that we all start from ground zero, but that the victory of Christ can be administered in such a way and a manner that nobody has to cast any spirit out of you again. The reason why we minister deliverance all the time is because like salvation, there is always someone added who needs that. Are we together? If I'm ministering deliverance, there are people, if I see you out here, I will say, what is wrong with you? You have been wasting my teaching. Because I don't expect you to be under the influence of any demons. But there are people who can come out. So we will keep ministering it. But I'm not ministering it to you as a matured believer. But it is my overall ministry. Are we together now? There is a level of growth you can attain onto. That can immune you from these demonic orchestrations. The initial separation is for your benefit, then methodically bringing light now builds you, constructs your spiritual understanding to a point where you are so wholesome. But there are many people who these demons are having a field day praying on their ignorance and then they continue to jump and say, I'm all right. And it is clear they are not all right. When you are free, it shows. Are we together? It is the reason why the greatest expression of liberty in many cases is the wind. The wind can move unrestrained. It doesn't move carelessly. If it begins to move carelessly, it becomes dangerous. But that restraint, that it is not bound, you can't chain it, you can't box it, you can't close it, that is the expression of liberty. Are we learning? The world is changing you tonight. To walk in dominion, you must have power and authority. Now listen carefully. I want to define for you man's jurisdiction in exercising authority and power. How far was man given to manifest authority and power? Because like I told you, man does not exercise authority and power just everywhere. God defined the jurisdiction where the power he's given to man will walk. There are rules of engagement. If you don't know this, you will shout and be binding and casting things anyhow and nothing will happen. Can I give you man's jurisdiction? Genesis 1.28 Blessed be the name of the Lord. And God blessed them and said, Be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth and subdue. Watch this now. Have dominion over the fish of the sea. Now these expressions, it does, I've taught you here. It doesn't just mean sea. He's talking about realms of operations and jurisdiction. Are we together? The sea, the fall of the air, 
over every living thing that creepeth or moveth upon the earth. So God defined for man his jurisdiction. Now let me tell you this. Where is the jurisdiction of man in terms of territorial jurisdiction? Two realms. One, the realm of the spirit. We do not have authority and power over heaven, the heaven of heavens. No, we do not. Are we together now? We can make petitions in prayer, but we cannot command, listen carefully, this, even this idea of commanding angels. Now, I don't want to get into very sensitive topics, but there are the idea of commanding angels. Angels don't obey you. Angels like all spirits obey the word. Are we together now? So if it looks like they are obeying you, they are simply obeying the word you have come to honor. You do not indefinitely command angels just because of hierarchy and keda. It is not given like that. That means if you become careless, they also obey the carelessness. No, there are rules of engagement. So there are many believers who sometimes they just command angels anyhow. And, I, and God is a merciful God. He can forbear with our ignorance. No. Are we together? The angelic realm and the realm of clean spirits. I hope you know that angels also form part of there are clean spirits and there are unclean spirits. So you don't just command any spirit. No, there are spirits that man's authority and man's power cannot command. There is nowhere in scripture where men commanded the four and twenty elders. There is nowhere in scripture where men commanded the living creatures. No, there are beings and inhabitants in heaven. We are not given the authority to command them. No. So you need to know what we have power over. I'm coming there. But from a jurisdictional component, watch this now. As far as the earth is concerned, this landmass and then the realm of the spirit, God gave man authority. Are we together? It is possible to speak to realities beyond the frame of science, beyond the frame of this natural habitat, this territory. And they can respond to you. This is the reason why we can rebuke devils. It's the reason why we can speak to spirits far beyond this place and they will still obey. And then over the earth, listen. The earth as it is, the winds and the elemental forces are still within the jurisdiction of man's power. You can speak to them, albeit in partnership with the word of God. Please learn this as a rule of thumb. Let this be the school of power and authority. Creation does not obey you. Creation obeys the word of God that you honor. Are we together now? Every time you speak and things happen, don't just pride and take credit for it. Uh -uh. It's because of something you have honored. You have honored the word. You have honored the spirit of God. You have honored God. So creation will honor you as they will honor God. You will not just stand and say in the name of Jesus, every demon spirit over Abuja, leave. If they do leave, it is because they saw in you your honor to the word of God. The reality of that revelation of authority. Are we together now? I can tell you one thing, the realm of the spirit and even our natural habitat does not honor nor do they obey rebellion. Obedience is the rule of dominion. In rebellion, there is no authority. Is someone learning? So when in the place of prayer, you speak increase. When in the place of prayer, you decree and declare that the elemental forces will not be used as instruments of enchantment and witchcraft against you. You are demonstrating authority. It's within your jurisdiction. Are we together now? So no one, I have taught you that in this realm, the supernatural depends on five elemental forces. Everywhere you see the supernatural manifesting physically, it depends, it is conveyed through five elemental forces. Number one, the earth. Number two, water. Number three, wind, a sound or whatever. Number four, light. So it said the sun shall not smite you by day. 
nor the moon by night. Are we together now? Every time you see the supernatural, I'm speaking to you now. I'm using the power of the air or wind, amplifying my voice through your ears to your spirit. The supernatural can never be made manifest outside of these elemental forces. And that is the reason why you must exert dominion over them. Because they are the same forces that are used by wizardry and witchcraft and orchestrations of darkness. When you go to a herbalist, it's the same elemental forces that will be used. Is someone learning? So what is man's jurisdiction? What were you given power over? Number one, you were given power over Satan and all unclean spirits. Listen to me. All unclean spirits that function within the earth oppressing believers. Hmm. You are given power over Satan and all unclean spirits. Listen, that function within the earth realm oppressing the saints because there are other unclean spirits that your power will not work for they have been bound with everlasting chains they are unclean spirits but it's not within the jurisdiction of the current dominion of the saints it is true there are other spirits that have been bound they are unclean spirits bound in everlasting chain you can't command them to be loosed they were bound and kept for the sake of the elect Are we learning? The thing is hard, but just listen carefully. That's why it's good to learn. Hallelujah. What I'm teaching you is not theory. You have power over Satan. James chapter 4 and verse 7. James 4 and verse 7. Very soon fire will fall in this place. It says, submit yourselves therefore unto God. Please shout the remaining sentence with me. One, two, read. One more time. For the last time. So in Christ and by the authority and the power that has been given to the saints, you can resist the devil himself. And the Bible says he will flee. Meaning if you resist him and he does not flee, you are doing something wrong. Because the rule is if you resist the devil with the consciousness of that authority and power, he will flee. He will flee. He will flee. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 1. We have power over Satan and over unclean spirits. Matthew 10 and verse 1. Ladies and gentlemen, please read with me. Don't get tired of reading. One, two, go. And when he had called unto him his 12 disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits. Power to do what? To cast them out and to heal all manner of diseases. <laughs> now listen. Every spirit that does not directly influence it and the operation of men on earth is not within your jurisdiction. Listen to me. The basis of your exercising dominion is because of the interference that those unclean spirits pose to your life on earth and the program of God. Are we together? So going around to start shouting around the planets that we know in our galaxies in a bid to bind spirits is not very mature. The Bible does not teach that. The only reason why you will be learning the use, the purpose of power, the reason why we rebuke spirits is because we have learned that they are insistent on remaining within our domain and affecting our well-being and the program of God. This is the basis for which we cast them out and resist their activity. Are we together now? That means if all the spirits that plague men today decide to relocate out of earth and not trouble you nor God's program, you don't have any business casting anything again. Your business becomes wisdom to build God's program. The reason why we have to pause and deal with them is because of their insistence to interrupt your life. So when the Bible says we have power over Satan 
and power over unclean spirits. Listen to why. The reason why we have power over those unclean spirits is because of their determination to remain and remain operative within the domain of earth. Are we together? And to frustrate the believer and the program of God. This is the reason why we deal with them. There are spirits, I repeat, that are bound in everlasting chains. There are other cadres of unclean spirit. You don't need to cast them. You don't need to do anything about them because God's justice is already being meted on them. They are already bound. They don't affect you. So you have no business with them. You have taken all the glory. You have taken all the praise. You have taken all dominion. You've taken all the praise. You have made them yours. Christ, to the King. You have made them yours. Christ, to the King. So don't forget, I'm defining for you the scope of the power we have been given. That you have power over Satan. Say power over Satan. Say, say power over unclean spirits and I've defined for you that unclean spirit does not just mean any unclean spirit unclean spirits that are within the jurisdiction of earth interrupting God's program that also includes the realm of the spirit but with respect to God's program on earth because let me tell you something our living and our operation on earth bar is a deep mystery that we do not even know anything much about. We only know the stories that we can glean from the Bible, from archaeology, are we together? And that which science can show us. But this earth and its operation and God himself and his program is a mystery that nobody has concise knowledge about. So it is foolish to just believe. I hope you know that Satan is not the only rebel. No. He's not the only one who has sinned against God. <laughs> I hope you know the lake of fire was created by God. Huh? Satan can be punished where he created. The lake of fire is part of God's justice system. That Satan and all those who are found wanting, who have not accepted Jesus, will be relocated to the lake of fire. There is nobody based on the authority of scripture, as far as our dispensation is concerned, who has been taken there now. That judgment in the lake of fire will start officially when Satan joins them. Read your Bible. It is God himself who will cast people to the lake of fire. It is the second death, the Bible calls it. Say you want to walk in power. You see that the thing is not just about I cast out demons. It's the reason why there is no regard for the saints in the spirit. Oh, I bind you. Say, you know me. I bind you. And, and while you are doing all that, the realm of the spirit just looks at you and they can see the gap in ignorance. So next time you say in the name of Jesus, I rebuke this spirit of infirmity. The spirit can see because revelation is light in the spirit. They can see the lights that support your authority. That the reason why you are asking the spirit to leave the sick body is because that body needs to be in health to live an excelling life and to serve the purposes of God. And since that spirit has constituted a nuisance to the well-being of that individual and the advancement of God's program, your dominion mandate allows you to tell that spirit to leave. Are we together now? This is koinonia. So you have power over Satan and over unclean spirits number two you have power to change negative circumstances this is another jurisdiction of the believers power power to change negative circumstances like sicknesses like diseases like afflictions matthew 8 27 please matthew chapter 8 and verse 27 but the man marveled, saying, please look up, please look up. 
You will write, but look up. I need you to learn this. But the man marveled, saying, read with me, what manner of man is this that even the winds and the seas obey him? Please look up. Did Jesus cast out wind every day? He only casted out wind when it became an interruption to his journey. Are you seeing that now? He did not just get up and look at the wind and say, wind, I need to demonstrate that I have authority. Provided the winds and the waves did not interrupt him walking as they were created, there was no need harassing them. But the moment the wind constituted a hindrance is the reason why many believers' prayers are not answered because the basis for exercising that authority is not understood. The winds and the waves were told to be still simply because if they were not still, they would cause something to happen in that boat and they will abort that journey to the other side. Are we learning now? This is very important. Give us that scripture again. What manner of man is this that even the winds and the sea, everybody say winds, say sea, does that look like the jurisdiction of man? The winds and the sea, not just spirits alone. The winds and the sea obey him. Do you know? Now, I, 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 don't, I don't want you to feel frustrated. But if believers were walking in the zenith of our kingdom authority, I'm trusting that God will bring us there. It means that the believers within a territory can stand to tell tornadoes and tell boys terrors operations of the wind manipulated by demons that are sweeping homes you can stand as a priest that you are and speak to the wind and say i seize your partnership with the spirits of destruction the waster will not use you to destroy houses and it should obey you it's only that we know that theoretically but if we do it it will not work you know why because we have not come into the consciousness of that authority someone say I'm rising Amen. say it in the name of Jesus I'm rising Amen. ladies and gentlemen as hard as this class is learn it before that wind comes near you because to think the wind will not come near you is playing games with your destiny one day you will need to exercise authority at a higher level and it may be a life and death case for you Man was given authority over Satan and unclean spirits as touching their interruption of our well-being and God's program on earth. Number two, man was given authority to change situations, uh, to change negative circumstances. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 8. Negative circumstances. Negative circumstances. Let me list for you a few negative circumstances. Number one, he says, heal the sick, sickness, cleanse the lepers, leprosy in all its variety, raise the dead, premature and timely death, cast out devils. He said, freely you have received, freely give. These are a sample of the negative circumstances. That means I have the liberty to speak over someone tonight that in the name of Jesus, the son of the living God, every circumstance that is antichrist, that is negative, mocking God, bringing shame and reproach to your life. Now you know that we are functioning within jurisdiction. In the name of Jesus, the son of the living God, may that circumstance change now. Let it change now. Hallelujah. If I speak over your life and turn your health to sickness and turn prosperity to poverty, we need to look closely at that prophetic word. Are we together? Either it is God who is judging you because of rebellion, because he does so. There are rules. God still judges men. It is only that his mercy triumphs judgment. But rebellion can make a man go out of the jurisdiction of God's mercy. And what you will face afterwards is judgment. Are we learning now? Yeah. It is possible that God, a man can be under the wrath of God. These are the, the circumstances that can turn good things to become bad things. 
Ananias and Sapphira, they died, not in the presence of demon spirits, in the presence of the apostles. Right there, they lied and they fell and they died. Are we together now? This is very important for you to note. I hope you are learning. Authority over negative circumstances. Can I allow you to exercise the authority upon your life in one minute? That everything you know is a negative circumstance in your life. Don't be silent. Open your mouth in one minute and declare. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Satan is not doing you a favor by living. Demon spirits are not doing you a favor by living. That ugly situation is not doing you a favor by living. Go ahead and make decrees. That in the name of Jesus. Shame is negative. Reproach is negative. Setbacks negative. Command that they live in the name of Jesus. Go ahead. Command that they live in the name of Jesus. Command that they live in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Please be seated. So I'm teaching you man's jurisdiction. I hope you are learning that number one, you have power and authority over Satan and unclean spirits as with respect to their interrupting your well-being and the program of God on earth. Number two, you have power to change negative, unfavorable circumstances. Number three, you have power to minister life. You have power to minister life. 1 Corinthians 15.45. Please write it down. 1 Corinthians 15.45. The Bible says, and so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening or life-giving spirit. In Christ, we are life-giving spirits. Someone say, I'm a life-giving spirit. I'm not just a spirit that is alive. There is a big difference between a spirit that is alive and the spirit. Adam was alive, but he could not give life to any man. Now we have the power. That is the reason why you can heal the sick. It's part of the ministry of life. Not just to cast out demons. You can literally heal the sick and correct something that is dying in someone by the power of the Holy Ghost. Ah, we used to sing a song. I, I don't know. What's that song? My hands are blessed. You still remember? With the blessings of the Lord. My hands are blessed. With the blessings of the Lord. Anyone I touch. Hold on, 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 hold on. Hold on. Anyone you touch. How many people did you touch from morning till now and you still left them crying? Listen, I'm teaching you something here. We sing songs that are so powerful but because they are bankrupt of revelation. Anyone you touch, look at your hands. I know when you touch food, it doesn't remain the same. Yes, but that's not what I'm talking about. Say I'm a life-giving spirit. Look at your hands and say it. I'm a life-giving spirit. It's true. As, as childish as what I'm teaching you is, it can change your life. That because someone shook you in the morning, the accident that the person should have in the afternoon does not happen again. A life-giving spirit. This is not you praying. This is you ministering life. If a flu can leave somebody to another person, and that person did not even have to believe the flu can be transferred. It means health can be transferred. If you don't believe this, then you are not a Christian. If I can transfer sickness, that coronavirus, hello, because you are standing near someone and you look at the person and maybe you sneezed, the person does not even know what transaction has happened. He just pats you and goes back home and certain symptoms so signs can follow men. That is the same way someone comes to your house. Maybe that person has been appointed unto death, but he sat on your chair. This is not idol worship, it's consciousness. 
I'm a life-giving spirit that the life of God drips like rain all over me. It's true. Shaba kapora kosiata. Life. The opening of my mouth is not only information, life. That if I stretch my hands, it is life I'm ministering to you. Life, not just over sickness. Someone say life. Say it, say life. Lay your hands on yourself. Say life. Listen. Carry this revelation. You own a restaurant. My hands are making that rice. I'm not just giving people food. I don't, Lord, the, those that have diabetes, those that have cancer, as they come to this restaurant, I am a life-giving spirit. I minister life. Someone shout it, say life. Listen. Now, I'm not saying you should practice it. I know it has been abused in the body of Christ. But that is why you can hear someone who say, a man of God sat here and I came and sat there. Or I came to the altar. It's not anything superstitious. It's that those who carry this consciousness, the realm of the spirit respects their consciousness. Listen, I tell you the truth and I lie not. I've had people who sat in places where I sat down for meetings. Many people sat there, but someone like the woman with the issue of blood who said, Lord, I recognize that part of the authority you gave man is the power to share life, to literally, like you can. Listen, science have taught you. Can you not share a charge card? Talk to me. I can have 1,000 Naira recharge card and I can see you in need. Out of compassion, I can share 500. And without our phones touching themselves, you will receive it. That means I can minister life to someone in Lagos. I can minister life to someone on the internet watching now. I speak life to you. Life in the name of Jesus. Listen, do you know what life is? Life does not just mean breathing in and out. Life means whatever makes for dignity is called life. Whatever makes for sustenance is called life. Whatever makes for ease is called life. So when I call you a life-giving spirit, I don't just mean you are a healing spirit. I mean your presence makes for continuity. There are some of you who will receive jobs, not because you need the job, but that company is dying and God needs a life-giving spirit to be introduced in that office because one month without a life-giving spirit, that corporation will go down and God will send you there. Someone say life. I'm teaching you power and authority. Listen, next week is miracle service. This is what gives us the audacity. That's why we pray for people. You see that it's not always about binding and casting. The major part of your authority is to give life. 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 Hmm. Life can translate as financial prosperity. Yes, sir. So anytime someone comes to you and says, I don't know why my life is going down. Aha. Uh -huh. What is invariably saying is life is leaving me. Whether economically, whether physically. When you, you see, let me tell you this. This ministry of life is not as easy as I'm telling you. It takes a high level revelation to walk in the experience of it. But when you press and contend and touch that realm, you become a blessing to the world indeed. Life. <laughs> life that you can call somebody out and say what is wrong with you and the person says I was diagnosed of a situation and you tell him do you believe in Jesus I was sent to represent his government hold my hands and that contact life something flows from you Ta -da 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 -da. If you can 
please hold hands with someone by your left and right in one minute just pray in tongues in one minute let the life of God within you find expression to someone you are receiving both horizontally and vertically let the life of God that build up through your prayer altar let it flow to someone pray in the spirit in one minute let it flow 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 go ahead and pray shaka baraka tapaka toso prega de balada anointed to give life anointed to administer life someone pray let it flow 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 oh let it flow right here right let it flow let it flow Listen, please listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. One of the greatest ways to be a life-giving spirit is to be a giver. Giving means something that was with you, a partaker of every grace you carry, leaves you to another person, whether as finances or resources, in any way and any manner when you are a giver is a major way i'm not talking of money so if i give someone 10 naira you will use the notes but there was a grace on it that is really what i gave you not the money the grace that brought ease the grace that brought favor is what you came in contact with if you don't know you can use a hundred naira and just buy something and it's the person who collected it at the shop that will carry the grace. Let it flow, let it flow. Let it flow, let it flow. Let it flow, let it flow. Oh, let it flow right here, right now. Listen, let me tell you something. When it comes to this subject of power bar, believe me, I know something about it. I'm not teaching you nonsense. This is not theory. By the privilege of God's grace and by his mercy, I have lived in this reality for many, many years. Power over Satan. Power over unclean spirits as they attempt to interrupt your well-being and God's program. Number two, power to change, manipulate negative circumstances in your life and the life of others. But in all your manifesting power, know that a major part of that assignment is to be a life-giving spirit. Say that after me. Life-giving spirit. One more time. Life-giving spirit. A preacher is a life-giving spirit. A medical practitioner who is a kingdom person is not just a healer like a ritualist or a traditional person. A life-giving spirit. Look at your hands again. Let it flow, let it flow. Let it flow, let it flow. Let it flow, let it flow, oh let it flow right here, One more time. right now. Let it flow, let it flow, let it flow, let it flow. Seated. 
Are you understanding my teaching so far? Hallelujah. Listen to me. Please look up. Every time you try to manifest authority and power beyond these jurisdictions, it will not work. It will not work. If ever the power of God flows through your life, it is at the assignment of driving away unclean spirits or Satan. It is at the assignment of turning negative antichrist situations in your life and the lives of people or it is at the assignment of ministering life. This is the threefold jurisdiction of genuine kingdom power. Now there are many many people who crave for impartation. Sadly and respectfully there are many who keep laying hands on others but never tell them the jurisdiction of it. So we use power anyhow and we attract casualties from the realm of the spirit because we are bankrupt of understanding. Before you ever administer the power of God, ask yourself, that situation, does it, is it within this threefold jurisdiction of operation? Is it casting Satan or any unclean spirit? If yes, then exercise it with authority. Is it changing negative situations? And how do you know the situations are negative? With respect to what the word of God says should be. There must be a reference. Because what you call negative has to be negative indeed. And the only way to verify that it is negative indeed is to verify what God has said. Once it is inconsistent with the character of God as revealed in scripture, once it is inconsistent with God's blueprint for you, it becomes an enemy deserving of your administering power. And then once you see that life is depleting from a person, a situation, and a system, when you carry patients to the hospital, and find out that they are almost dying or something they they have a way of immediately trying to resuscitate them the attempt is first to get life in place then any other treatment can come you are a life-giving spirit when people sit down and tell you about their situations don't sit down and say hey yeah uh, an apostle is not here oh. how will we get him now it means you've been wasting the teaching you are receiving are we together the job of apostle teaching you is not to make himself an idol over you is to empower you that the same lord is rich unto all are we together that knowledge and impartation can equip you that you may say apostle is not here but there's something he has taught us that the lord works with men and he's here in our midst let me pray for you that may be your first miracle look at the woman who came here last year on a wheelchair depleted but right now look at her standing it's called life hello madonna ah, hello hello madonna Sit down and write. Let's hurry up. How to manifest kingdom power and authority. I want to show you now the dynamics of manifesting it. Now that you understand the jurisdiction, I want to show you how that power is transmuted through the believer to the circumstance or the area that needs change. Are you ready? The principal channel for releasing power and manifesting authority is through words write it down the principal channel for manifesting for releasing power and manifesting authority is through words mark eleven twenty three. everybody say words verily i say unto you that whosoever shall say everybody say shall say walk with me say shall say Whosoever shall say to this mountain, you would think because it's a mountain, he never said whoever shall push this mountain shall say 
be thou removed and cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass he shall have whatsoever he saith ecclesiastes 8 and verse 4 words you cannot walk in kingdom power and authority if you do not understand the power that is embedded in words words are conveyors words are like trays they carry spiritual possibilities read with me 8 and verse 4 ecclesiastes 1 2 read where the word there is power stop there one more time where the word of a king is there is the bible says in revelation chapter 5 and verse 10 that we have been made unto our god kings and priests and that we shall reign on earth we have been made unto our god kings and priests and that we shall reign upon the earth now the bible says where the word of a king is it didn't say where the word of a human being is you have been speaking like a human being it is the reason why nothing will happen the day you speak like royalty you see that now where the word of a king is there is power when kings give commands it happens as they have said the reason is because they are conscious of the fact that they are in dominion walking in dominion the primary channel for manifesting power listen carefully not the only channel but the principal channel usually all other channels are supplementary channels that just enhance your speakings like the laying on of hands a principle of contact and transfer are we together now usually when people lay hands they add words to them there are many other channels that transmute the power of God but essentially the power of God is released and kingdom authority is manifested through words this is very important that means when Satan wants to stop you from walking in authority he focuses on your words he makes your word bankrupt of integrity or wrong words or words that are not graced with power you see the reason why for the believer he says man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that should be matthew 4 4 or so by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of god it means that you must be mindful of the words let me tell you this integrity with words is a track record in the spirit you must build if you do not honor your own words the realm of the spirit will not honor your words is the reason why the realm of the spirit has respect for integrity are we together creation cannot respect words that you yourself have disobeyed You build authority among many ways by trusting God to become a person of integrity. Comes from the word integer. So there are many, many people who have violated, they cannot trust their, their selves with words. Is the reason why when they speak to creation, is the reason why they speak to men, there is no response from the spirit because their words do not carry weight. One of the reasons why the word of God is powerful is because there is integrity at the back of it. God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. How many of you have listened to people who you know, they have a track record of disappointing their own words. If they tell you, come and meet me tomorrow, I'm going to give you a brand new car. You just laugh and say, praise the Lord. Right there, their words die because you know they don't have integrity. If that kind of person tells you rise up and walk, just go and look for a powerful man of God because you are wasting your time. I mean what I'm saying. Jesus I know. Paul I know. Who are you? Listen, get to a point where you place value on your words because your words are conveyors of your power. 
The Bible tells us, listen, it says even a fool when he's silent, he's regarded wise. The reason why many of us are not powerful is because we waste words. Our words have become so cheap, they have no value in the realm of the spirit. So it doesn't matter what you tell men or you tell spirits, there is no regard. My heart is indicting a good matter. Yea, I speak of excellent things. It says my tongue is the pen of a ready writer. My tongue is the pen of a ready writer. If I open my mouth, I'm imprinting something on the destinies of men. Listen, true dominion and power. How many of you know that there are certain diplomatic people across the globe even the most careless of their words can implicate the nation. If they make a mistake and say something they did not intend, there are professionals who are hired to interpret what certain diplomats say because it is believed they've been so trained. If America as a nation today makes a certain statement, either through their secretary of state or any of the people there, do you know that even if it's a mistake, you have to face it. But people can take them by their word and say, you said this. May you get to a point where the realm of the spirit respects your words. Yes. That when you tell a demon spirit, go, you really mean go. You are not just saying go to mean I am afraid. For I am a man under authority. I say unto one, go and he goeth i say unto one come and he comes i say unto one do this and he does it jesus you are also a man under authority speak the word only verse 8 speak the word only speak the word only release your power by speaking the word manifest your authority by speaking the word I've seen the power of God a bit in my life and I am amazed how things can become quiet and organized until faith-filled words begin to come. That someone can remain sick, the oppressed can remain bound, everything can happen like that. But when the Rima word comes from the throne, immediately it begins to address the issues of concern and you find out someone will tell you the pain is gone, can't feel it again that you send words ahead of people listen do you know that if you come to church and live with words it's like a man who went to fish and left with a net full of fish there are souvenirs spiritual souvenirs that you carry after every service but because many of us do not value words we throw them away that word i've heard ah, it's nice and we throw them away and we go back home empty nothing to run with listen let me tell you the truth when i studied this i found afresh again the secrets of our fathers in the gospel they were men who respected and they still respect words are we together so our father and the lord for instance baba debo will say there's someone here the lord said i should tell you by so 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 and so and you hear people shouting amen Sometimes you see them shout amen like it does not make sense until you see what follows. Because God confirms the counsel of his messengers. If it is God that has inspired what you are saying, inspired by the word of God, the Lord walks with you confirming the words with power. Listen to me. If you are a man of God here, I want you to listen very carefully. If the only thing you bring to the altar is an intelligent lecture, people are going to be frustrated. End time ministry is power ministry. And I've defined for you power. It's, there are many people who fall down and stand up and there was no power that happened there. That as you speak to men, the words come with such an energy. It penetrates to the physical realm, goes to the realm of the spirit, begins to correct things in their lives. They get up and walk out of church and they return back with testimonies. Pastor said this. This man of God said this. He said to me, you are blessed. Now, do you know in church, when we are blessing people and we say in the name of Jesus, people just say amen. But the truth is that 
they have mastered our words not coming to pass it's just that they want to be polite on us but the truth is that they don't believe it when we say in the name of jesus you are blessed don't just say, amen amen in jesus name when those words really come to pass you will crave it if you can't find the man of god you will listen to that message again and shout amen with the same energy you use while you were in church my commitment as a man of god is to keep staying with god enriching myself with his presence growing in the word and getting to a point where like samuel my words will not fall to the ground that if i stretch my hands and i speak over you and say let the gates open that truly the realm of the spirit will honor those words and you will see the gates open you know how much of a blessing you will be when you are like that oh kings will entreat your favor and they will say like jesus speak the word only so we are in a situation right now can you speak the word only you are about to board a flight and they tell you someone's life is collapsing and you say in the name of jesus you remember this sermon i'm a life-giving spirit that is a negative situation in the mighty name of jesus i decree and declare that the lord sends helpers of destiny and as soon as that call is over someone just calls and says i don't know but i just felt like calling you nobody feels like calling they are it's a programming in the spirit felt like calling you in this wicked world no sir Jehovah will be your everlasting light. He'll be your glory, your strength and your sight. The light of the moon will be like the light of the sun. And the light of the sun will shine seven times as bright. Listen, I raise that song because someone you came to church at a level in the spirit but you do not even know what is happening to you there is an ascendance in the spirit you will go back to that meeting you will go back to that crusade you will go back to that prayer meeting and the only thing you will see is fire like you have never seen before such an effulgence of power that you will tell the sick in the name of jesus christ be healed and you will think they are lying i checked it the issue of blood is gone I checked it the migraine is gone the medical verdict has been changed then you don't just brag you remember my lecture the kingdom has come that you are manifesting superior authority do you know you get to a point where you gain mastery huh you gain mastery that you have invested words like an atmosphere to a point that is not only your mouth that speaks even your atmosphere speaks when you step into a place without you opening your mouth the words that you have invested will keep creating changes that's why you can see that someone will step into a place and without actively opening his mouth certain things begin to happen and i'm not just talking of falling down again and standing up I'm talking of genuine changes. I made a covenant with God and I, I still keep praying till now that I will never, that nobody should meet me twice, twice to be blessed. Twice. It's a journey, but it's my commitment that I get to a point where if I meet you once under God, and I actually speak to you, you can go back rejoicing. Um, your hunger can take you there. Listen to my teaching, come up here. Hunger and thirst, part one. When men become hungry and thirsty, they can press into the things of God. Listen, don't allow anybody make you camp around spiritual mediocrity. There are virgin dimensions in the spirit. You can press onto and carry power and demonstrate genuine authority upon the earth not theoretical authority not saying things and shouting and making noise potent power with results following if you had any prayer group here any prophetic ministry any prayer ministry any evangelical ministry any apostolic ministry any kind of ministry 
this message is more important for you go back and flog it and say powerless ministry must die in my life powerless ministry must die i can't come and be wasting the time of god's people oh god will do it oh god will lift you oh god shout amen and at the end of it grace after grace the end time church is hungry and desperate and if you will not be a transmuter of life i tell you a time will come you will be frustrated did you hear what i said The cry for genuine, to walk in genuine authority is a cry that we must embrace. Yesterday, tears were rolling out of my eyes. I was watching a lot of videos, materials, just in preparation for this. And I watched one of the videos of Maurice Rulo pastor. And Maurice Rulo made a statement that touched me. I watched that man and he said a lot of things. And you know, the, kind, the palpable, even from the teaching, it was not like he was shouting, but my God, you will know that this man has an experience with God. And he was not just speaking theory. I listened to Reinhard Bonke. I listened to T.L. Osborne. I listened to A.A. Allen. I listened to many of these fathers of faith. At the end of it, I just got down my knees. I said, Lord, help us. Help us. I'm not discouraged, but help us. Do something and please do it fast. Do something and please do it fast. Let us carry something we can serve the nations without shame. Let us carry a God factor we can transport to the nation. Like Nigeria found oil and their lives changed. Like other nations find, may we find genuine power that you can, as you travel in the plane, going from nation to nation, you are rejoicing once you arrive there. You begin to be happy for the people, not because of you. The treasure is in an earthen vessel, but let make sure there is treasure there. Don't just carry the vessel. Make sure the treasure is there. Make sure the treasure is there that when you lay hands on someone you are not just laying empty hands as that hand comes glory comes with it power comes with it sign the name of Jesus I speak over you may my God rewrite your story may my God lift you and you are not just speaking empty words the realm of the spirit is what is really shouting that amen that man stands up and you are programmed a climate of favor a climate of grace a climate of victory the person goes back to the same person who was oppressing him and he says I don't know what but the Spirit of God says you should just stay in the house don't pay rent again stay until the day you have your own house then he returns back to you and says what happened you tell him let me explain to you there are things men cannot do but there are things the power of God can do words words don't be careless with your words don't speak empty words you are you are demeaning yourself in the spirit don't cheapen words don't join baseless childish arguments you are draining yourself in the spirit are we together let your words be weighty let your words be heavy that when you open your mouth to speak let the sick be healed let the oppressed be healed. You speak over people as they lift their hands shouting amen. Let it not just be that it's just church ritual, but that they are actually receiving something. Do you know, I've programmed my understanding such that every time I speak to people, it's not that it's in a vision, my imagination. I always see something resting on people as I speak to, I'm not talking of visions. There are times I can see, but whether or not I have primed my imagination that every time I open up my mouth to speak prophetic words of blessings, I have trained my mind to just see, imagine like, like dew just resting on people coming from there. So everyone is carrying his own as you are living. And only God knows the possibilities that are contained therein. For a man of God, you came here weak. Maybe you traveled from so far and you came weak. End time ministry cannot be done without power. The wisdom of God is there, but let me tell you, the forces that stop God's program, not just the demonic arsenals, 
the deterioration that has come to this system by reason of the fallen nature God is looking for life-giving spirits that he can find one and you become a giver of life everywhere you go I told you that life does not just mean being alive alone there are many people who are alive but they don't have life did you hear what I said many people are alive but they don't have life life means ease life means whatever makes your life dignified life means whatever reflects and reveals God someone comes to shake your hand as a pastor and says sir can I give you a handshake and as you shake them you release that hand that's how that man's trouble has fallen to the ground that's what, how that man's sorrow has fallen to the ground. That's how disfavor has fallen to the ground. You have opened him to a new chapter. You see, the thing about men is that by the time they receive genuine transformation, they know where it happened. They will come back. The woman with the issue of blood had most likely been touching people, but she knew that when she touched Jesus, here's what she said, that virtue, virtue, Jesus felt virtue leaving him. The woman felt something happening to her and that the issue of her blood had stayed. Let's wrap up. What is the assignment of power and authority? Write this down. What is the assignment of power and authority? Four scriptures. John 1, 6 and 7. What is the assignment of power? What is the assignment of authority in the kingdom? There was a man, the Bible says, sent from God, whose name was John. Verse 7, the same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. Take note of that statement, that all men through him might believe. John chapter 20, 30 and 31. John 20, 30 and 31 and many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples which are not written in this book, he says but these are written, these miraculous manifestations of his power they have been documented that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ the Son of God and that in believing ye might have life through his name. Acts chapter 4 and verse 33. The assignment of power. The assignment of kingdom authority. And with great power. Gave the apostles witness. Of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace was upon them all. Matthew 6 and verse 10. Final scripture. Matthew 6 and verse 10. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Thy will be enforced in earth as it is in heaven there are two major assignments of kingdom authority two major assignments of power number one to give witness to the lordship of jesus bringing many to salvation the first assignment of kingdom authority the first assignment of power in the kingdom is to give witness to the lordship of jesus bringing many by that witness to salvation to bring wit witness to the lordship of jesus bringing many to salvation are you ready okay let me give you three two to live a victorious christian life on earth while serving the purposes of the kingdom to live a victorious christian life the second assignment of power and authority to live a victorious christian life on earth while serving the purposes of the kingdom god does not want you and i to serve the purpose of the kingdom living a defeated life he wants us to excel he wants us to walk in victory now thanks be to god which causes us always to triumph thanks be to god which giveth us the victory and this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith to live a victorious christian life on earth while serving the purposes of the kingdom the final assignment of power is to advance the cause of the kingdom 
to advance God's agenda upon the earth. To advance the cause of the kingdom. To advance God's agenda upon the earth. One last time. The assignment of kingdom authority and power to give witness to the Lordship of Jesus, bringing many, not few, many to salvation. Number two, to live a victorious life, Christian life on earth, while serving the purposes of the kingdom. And number three, to advance the cause of the kingdom, God's agenda upon the earth. So power is connected to giving witness witness that leads to salvation power is connected to living a victorious life and power is connected to kingdom advance kingdom come anything that is within this jurisdiction is the assignment of power ladies and gentlemen listen to me very carefully the days that are before us right now are days that will require walking and manifesting in kingdom authority. Darkness looms across the horizon, moving from nation to nation. Iniquity has increased. Wickedness has increased. There, there is no imagination conceivable that the heart of man has not fabricated. And Satan has unleashed all kinds of arsenals against the saints. Whether it is health, you see all kinds of sicknesses now. Sicknesses that did not used to be there. Now there are sicknesses that we used to know with only old people. Right now you find teenagers. Hell for you. Every kind of evil that Satan can find he will launch it against the saints. But thanks be to God, which causes us always to triumph. And that happens through the ministry of power. As for me, and as for Koinonia, I've made up my mind under God that we will be a people manifesting kingdom authority. We will be a people manifesting power walking in genuine dominion not just talking about it not just preaching about it but demonstrating the living presence of the christ to our world it's a journey and we will keep pressing one step after the other while motivating as many to join in this journey of emergence this journey of becoming this journey of empowerment that our gospel if powerless will not do much for the kingdom our christian adventure if powerless will not do much for the kingdom there are sick people around our world there are oppressed people around our world not all of them will come for koinonia but all of them are in need of the power of god therefore everyone who has converged here and the many following online god is counting on you to be an agent a manifestation of his power reaching where my hands cannot reach reaching where our sermons cannot reach the most important thing is that that the power of god be superimposed across every life every family every situation that the kingdoms of this world will become the kingdoms of our god and of his christ that when we call him king of kings let it not be a vain title let it be a title that is justified by the emergence of a people of power And this has nothing to do with being in ministry. There are various ways the power of God can be made manifest in and through your life. Now, let me say this before we wrap up. I want you to listen very carefully. I forgot to say this at the start of the sermon. Let me just use the opportunity to say this and then we'll wrap up. Thank you very much for appreciating me on my birthday. My birthday is on Tuesday. It's an honor to be alive. And um, there will be a broadcast here on Tuesday. So Tuesday, 10 a.m. in the morning. Everyone is invited. <laughs> Hallelujah. Please, everyone would have a brief service for about an hour or so. A broadcast here, 10 a.m. 
on the dot hallelujah so everyone please connect across the globe then immediately after the broadcast we're going to be distributing rice to about um, one to two thousand people outside <laughs> hallelujah just in honor just to give i i completely forgot and i am glad that um so we are focusing on widows orphans less privileged please call everyone once we exhaust the number we just tell everybody we're sorry but make sure that no single bag of rice is wasted hallelujah it will be done right outside here we have people who will organize themselves so abuja listen you don't have to travel from anywhere to come and get you can agree with those there are enough people 2000 is not so much but at least it's something that we can do praise god so immediately the broadcast starts on by 10 everybody make sure you are around 10 on the dot all workers take notes and once we're done maybe 11 11 30 then there will be distribution of rice please if you are coming make sure you are ready to behave yourself no stampeding no misbehavior it's still the house of god outside praise god and for those of you who you have loved ones that this can make a difference to please let them come and there will be a system of arranging everyone we hope that we'll do our best just outside we'll do that very fast we'll bag the rice and just give them just in honor to say thank you and to say i love you the birthday broadcast thank you thank you it's very important because to me it is usually my gift to the body of christ i have the opportunity to share a few perspectives and to speak prophetic blessings over the koinonia global family and then extending to as many who are connected so please make sure 10 on the dot is going to be live it will be aired on our platforms make sure you take advantage of it and immediately afterwards we'll head outside to do the distribution now uh, i'm embarrassed to say this but let me just say this i know that uh, i'm not somebody who likes putting people under pressure at all for things like birthdays if I have my way, I always will run away. And then when we're done, I come back. But I know that people usually come with gifts and whatever. There's only so much. I can't promise that everybody will be able to see me to say thank you. Don't be offended if for any reason you are not able to see me. We'll just delegate people who can receive all those gifts and speak blessings. And um, whilst I'm here, for as many who are here, we can be fine. We can exchange pleasantries. But afterwards from this place all other gifts or whatever please you would do it at the daughters of abraham doa our other auditorium there will be people waiting there and they'll wait up until 4 p.m when the prayer department starts their own and then prayer department will start and then school of ministry will have their own in the evening so it's a it's, it's a full day so once we leave this place all other any givings whatever gifts and the rest please you can take it there and even if you don't see me there, there will be people designated. Just believe that they have been mandated to speak blessings upon you. But let me encourage you, don't put yourself under any kind of pressure whatsoever. Hallelujah. Your prayer for me is your greatest gift. Your listening to this kind of thing I'm teaching and walking in it is the greatest birthday gift you can give me. That your life becomes an expression of these truths that we're teaching. Hallelujah. I had to interrupt my message to just bring that, particularly because of the welfare. So please um, make sure that the widows and the less privileged, of course, and all those who have that need, but we're going to give priority to less privileged families and widows. You can come and you'll be arranged and organized just outside of this auditorium. And immediately after the broadcast, there will be people who have been trained outside and they'll help manage whatever you get, no matter how little. Please accept it with love from me, but really accept it with love from Jesus because he's the one who has given this life and he's the one who has given the privilege to be able to do what we have to do. Is that fine? Can we rise up to pray now? Please rise up. Thank you. Again, hold hands with someone by your left and right. And pray one simple prayer, but let it be faith-filled, coming from your heart. Father, I desire to walk in power. I desire to walk in authority. Go ahead and pray. 
and grace me with power from on high grant me the revelation and the encounter that brings me into the experience of authority someone pray let powerlessness be eroded from my life eroded from my ministry eroded from my business eroded from my kingdom adventure someone is praying I desire to be endued with power, genuine power, genuine kingdom power, power for signs, for wonders, powers to correct anomalies in the lives of people, power that enables me to be a transmuter of life, 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 that my world becomes a better place because I'm a Christian. My world becomes a more glorious place because I am a child of God. Someone pray. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Man of God, pray. It's a new level in your ministry. Prophet, pray. Apostle, pray. Pastor, pray. Teacher, pray. Missionary, pray. Businessman, pray. It's a new season in the name of Jesus. I will not just talk power. I will walk in the experience of power. It will be evident in my life that I have an experience with God. An experience that has translated to power. I will walk conscious of the authority that I have in Christ. Influencing circumstances over my life and the life of as many. Bringing glory to the name of the Lord. Bearing great witness to the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus name I pray. I speak over your life in a name that is above all names standing in partnership with every grace in this house I decree and declare that dimensions of power and authority that are until now virgin dimensions for you dimensions you have not stepped into I pray for you from the depth of my heart begin to walk in them now you will speak and your words will no longer be empty I say to you again, you will speak and your words will no longer be empty. You will speak and create realities in the lives of people. You will speak and cast out devils from the lives of people. You will speak and correct negative circumstances in the lives of people. You will speak and release life to as many. In the name of Jesus. Where there is darkness, as soon as you step in there, let there be light. Where there is death, as soon as you step in there, in the name of Jesus, let there be resurrection. Where there is poverty and limitation, as soon as you step in there, let there be abundance. In the name of Jesus Christ. For your sake, people around you will not be weak. For your sake, the weak will become strong. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy to you and I call you life-giving spirits. In ministry, you are a life-giving spirit. In business, you are a life-giving spirit. In career, you are a life-giving spirit. As a parent, you are a life-giving spirit. In the name of Jesus, and everything that looks like death and weakness in your life, I drive it far from you. Everything that looks like shame and reproach, I drive it far from you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Do not forget that next week we'll have the joy of celebrating our miracle service for the month of June. Listen to me. Make sure you invite everyone, not just everyone who wants to come to church, but everyone who is in need of a touch from God. Don't leave anyone behind who needs a touch from God. Hallelujah. The altar call now. You need Jesus wherever you are. Jesus is calling you. He's been speaking to you through my lips. Lend me your attention, please. You are in this place and he's telling you that it's time to make it right with him. You want to make your ways right with Jesus for the first time? Or you felt the need while hearing me speak to rededicate your life to Jesus? Wherever you are, I'm going to count one to five. Unashamedly, I want you to leave your seat 
and join this gentleman who has come to the front here already. Wherever you are, whether you are across the balcony, all the overflows outside and the many who are falling online. I begin my counting one to five. Let me request that you come stand before me. One. Let's celebrate them as they come. Two. Celebrate someone who is coming to Jesus. Come. 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 Koinonia, is this the best you can do? Celebrate them. Come to Jesus. He is able to give you a new beginning. He is able to give you a new beginning. Did you hear me? He is able to give you a new beginning. Three, young and old, male and female, come to Jesus. Four, if you're coming from outside, please join them very quickly. Very quickly. Very quickly. In Jesus' name. Now, thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. I appreciate you for the courage to come and stand before Jesus. The Bible declares that as many who will come to him, look at me, please come. He will in no wise cast away. You have come declaring his lordship. I want you to know that this is a very serious call. Lift your right hand if you can as a sign of surrender. And please say this after me as loud and as clear as you can. Say, Lord Jesus, I love you with all my heart I believe you are the son of God I believe that you died for my sin right now I receive your life into my spirit I declare that the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over my life I'm a child of God from today I go for whatever and backward never. Amen. Please keep your beautiful hands. Father, thank you for this once. They have come declaring your lordship over their lives. And I decree and declare in the name of Jesus that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over your life. I decree and declare that this is a new beginning for you. I call you the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And I declare that you go forward ever and backward never. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Please do me a favor. May I request that you move to my right. That will be your left. There are counselors who will have a very quick word with you and a prayer with you. And afterwards, you are back to your seat. Let's honor them as they go, please. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Pastor, thank you so much again. You and your dear wife, we really honor your presence. Let's give them a big God bless you. And for everyone who's taken the time, particularly those who have traveled coming in from far and near we really honor your presence let me speak the final blessing over your life and we're done please stand amen 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 Let this week beginning be the best week you've had yet. I said let it be the best week you've had yet. Let favor go before you. Let grace go before you. Let mercy go before you. It will be good news from Sunday to Sunday. I say it again, it will be good news from Sunday to Sunday. I declare that no weapon fashioned against you will prosper. And that every tongue that rises up against you will go down for your sake. In the name of Jesus. I declare that your love for Jesus remains on fire. Your passion for the word remains on fire. Your passion for prayer remains on fire. In the name of Jesus. I call you a life giving spirit. Through your hands many will come to Jesus. Through your words many will be healed. In the name of Jesus Christ, the good news you've been waiting for, may it manifest this week. I say it again, the good news you've been praying for, may it manifest this week. In the name of Jesus, men will run over themselves to help you. In the name of Jesus, go in peace and be led forth with joy. For in Jesus' name we pray.
Together let's share the grace in fellowship, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives as we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. See you on Tuesday. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.